you ever have loved gardens by people like Vita Sackville West at Sissinghurst or the gardens of uh, Edward Lutyens and uh, Gertrude Jekyll, then this really is a place that brings influences from all of those people together. Because although we're on the Amalfi Coast, this really is an English garden with an English heart to it. You can't help but feel relaxed here in this garden at Villa Chimbroni. I mean, just, your heart just kind of mellows, and it was bought as a place by Ernest William Beckett, Lord Grimthorpe, in 1904, as a place to come and heal after the early death of his wife. He was suffering depression, and having done the grand tour as you did in those days, he fell in love with this and just thought I had to have it. Beckett and his designer, Nicola Mansi, were greatly influenced by what was already here on the site. So this Renaissance Avenue here, he kept. But then they added lots of architectural elements, such as Roman statuary and bits and bobs that they found from archaeological sites, so as to give it that romantic feeling of what they felt the landscape of this area should be all about. So at the end of the Avenue of Immensity, you've got one of these archaeological statues I was telling you about. Here, the statue of Ceres, who's the goddess of harvest. Brilliant focal point at the end of the avenue, leading on beyond her to the Terrace of Infinity. Avenue of Immensity, Terrace of Infinity. You really do feel like you're in a different world. To have a terrace like this, the Terrace of Infinity, look at all of these 18th century marble busts, it really is such a treat. And beyond it, the wonderful coastline of the Amalfi Coast. I long to be able to grow plants like this in our climate. I mean, agaves are one of my favourite plants. Agave Americana here. And just look at it. It absolutely loves it. The sun's beaming down and it's all curled and just a wonderful specimen. Really, really great. Of course, we can grow them in our climate, but when we have these really cold winters, um, you know, sometimes they just, they go. But I think it's worth just trying to grow them just so that you can have something like this. Absolutely wonderful in a gravel garden or on a really sunny, south-facing border. Fantastic. <sighs> this is my, my, my parents' favourite plants that they found in Italy, Jasminum officinatus. They absolutely love it, don't you? It's beautiful. And it smells got, lovely. We've got, we've got to have some in our garden, so that's... So there we go. The definite. From the sunny terrace of infinity you descend the hill and you come down to this lovely little shady spot underneath this magnificent oak, Mercury's Seat. And here in the middle you've got this lovely 18th century statue of Hermes at rest. Lots of people wandered by and touched his toe hoping for a nap. In the corner underneath the oak tree is this lovely shady spot where you sit, a stone bench with a poetical inscription Lost to a world in which I crave no part, I sit alone and commune with my heart. Pleased with my little corner of the earth, glad that I came, not sorry to depart. Just look at this lovely avenue of Capressa Semperverens and Lavender here, and at the very end, this temple of Bacchus. When you start seeing things like this, you really can see the landscape movement influences, and I start thinking of places like Stourhead, where there's temples everywhere. Absolutely beautiful. By this uh, statue of David with his sling and poor old Goliath's head here at the bottom. The thing I really love is this winding hedge of Bucks of Sempervirens which goes all the way through the garden. It's a really versatile evergreen plant that can be used in so many different settings. This Hortensia Avenue with its pergola here with the great big terracotta brick columns and then the timber overbeams is a brilliant feature whether it be the case, but this really looks like a, a Luxions-inspired feature to me. Mm -hmm. 